So you want to make money on the side with Node.js? I got 10 ideas, side hustle ideas, going to put money in your pocket and you reach the right video. So let me explain. This video was brought to you by Digital Academy, your number one source to learn how to make money programming and get that six figure salary you desire. Our academy have a wide range of courses, including 3K in 30 days, our mentorship membership program, and much, much more. When you sign up for our free community, you get access to our membership community with like-minded professional who's going to help take your career to the next level. So let's take the first step to get started and really take your career to the next level with our seven step money guide today. So let's go ahead and click the link below to sign up for our free seven step guide to help you get your career started today. All right, guys, a lot of you guys, a lot of you got no JS skills and you're trying to figure out how you monetize these skills and really put yourself in a position to get to that six figure salary. And you're trying to go online and find some examples of some projects with no luck. I'm going to give you guys some examples how you can make money with specific no JS projects. And um, you're going to see a theme here. And um, I'm, I'm gonna let you know how to implement your no Node.js knowledge and really be able to provide value to a company and put yourself in a position to win, guys. So, a lot of uh, no Node.js is actually on the server side. So it's technically not a web development or it's part of a web development um, stack as far as getting out web apps. I like to do web form automation, guys. Somebody submit an application in or web form via JavaScript and you process and do something with that data. That's a huge market for um, Node.js guys, be able to process that data, put it on the server, automate processes beyond that web application on the server. You got a ton of companies who needing that, so you guys need to jump on that. Same with number two, web imaging, guys, same concept. Somebody submit something via the front end of the application, you wanna process and fire off an application or process or create an image of something. You have that server side resource that you can process that data, create an image, create an Excel spreadsheet, really provide or put that information on the network for somebody to really leverage those uh, um, that information straight off of the server. Uh, Node.js can do that type of work for you guys. And not all the projects is exclusive to Node.js. I'm trying to give you that JavaScript Node.js combination. Um, some of them are exclusive Node.js as, as I go through them, but a lot of them is gonna be dependent on different stacks. But guys, just like anything else, once you learn one programming language, the other one kind of come natural to you as far as just the syntax and the foundations. So let's make sure we kind of keep that in mind. Number three, guys. No Number three guys, uh, dashboards and reporting. Um, it's very critical to get certain types of data to the actual server. A lot of times out of the canned APIs and things just don't have the information you need or you have to do some additional processing. You have to do some additional monitoring in certain situations. Uh, Node.js actually gives you that flexibility to be able to put any and everything on a particular application. Plus, from an alerting standpoint, guys, the level of alerting projects go to a whole nother level. You can monitor a specific file path, something happened, you can shoot an alert to the front end of the application. You can email somebody. You got a wide range of options when it comes to alerting and dashboarding with Node.js, guys. So you need to kind of check your options out. Number five, well, number four is the web API integrations. Huge, huge market for Node.js, guys. Um, got a lot of options there as far as just pulling and receiving data, processing it on the server, manipulating it, putting it to the database, um, sending it to the front end of the application. There's a huge market for that, guys. Converting and moving legacy uh, web apps and data. This one is a little bit uh, more complex because you're going to be using other technologies depending on the mobile app and what you're going to be using as far as just the uh, native app if you're using that. But a lot of you guys really can leverage your Node.js skills to really kind of find out what you can process on the server instead of using native apps, guys. A lot of you guys want to kind of lean one side or the other <clears throat> when it comes to native apps. I'm a huge web app guy. 
I have very few projects that I do native apps in. Again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm almost exclusive web app, but there's a lot of processing that can be done on a server to level the playing field as far as just a native application versus a web app. And Node.js can bridge that gap as far as just processing. You guys are noticing a lot of backend processes throughout these this list that I'm giving you. Very, very profitable. Stuff that people can't see. Stuff that you're probably not gonna find on web forms because everybody is so concerned with the front end application and what's available there nobody's really t paying attention to the back end and the flexibility you have by using a single programming language which is javascript to be able to facilitate this and um, really leverage these guys so <clears throat> like i was saying guys I'm, i got more than 10 that I'm gonna cover here today, but I have a seven step guide below. It's free, sign up for that. We cover this from a project level more in detail and kind of give you the philosophy and the strategy you need to be able to put this into play right now and to really take your projects to the next level. So go ahead and sign up for my seven step guide. And if you already signed up for my seven step guide, go ahead and um, pick up or uh, check out some of my premium courses, guys. Really good information. Got a lot of flexible payment options for you and really can find something that works for you so links are below so number six mapping apis same thing guys a lot of the apis are maturing so this one may not be feasible for long but it's still a lot of information to be had basically the way I like to use um, processing or any kind of server-side application is those unstructured data sets that you just can't get out of the box from a typical API. Uh, Node.js is great for this type of stuff, guys, because a lot of times um, you go to a developer SDK or their standard out-of-the-box system development kit, it just don't have the stuff that you need. Or you just need to do something temporarily and you don't want to go through a whole process of setting up something that you're going to be using temporarily. No JS is great for that kind of stuff, guys. This is a utility that I leverage a lot on that. And um, I highly suggest you guys. Uh, mapping is one of those things where traditionally it's front end, and I think it's gonna eventually be powerful enough to handle probably 95, 98% of the cases straight out of the box. But you're gonna always have that 2% that is gonna be customized to what that company needs. They may want specific data out of uh, a strange data source or a combination of an Excel spreadsheet and this and process it then put it to the screen. It just, possibilities are endless. So kind of keep that in mind. Number seven guys, <clears throat> accounting integration and order processing. You got a lot of uh, different applications that are, uh, are sending you different type of data sets to that one server. You need to be able to pull that data in multiple ways. Node.js give you that option. Um, I'm huge in data. Data is important. Um, you got other applications that can process data better, like um, I would say Python. If you just strictly trying to process a data set and you're working purely on the actual data, then Python is probably gonna be a better option for you. But if you're talking server side, I, I have JavaScript knowledge. I need to pull these different data sources in. I need to send it to either the front end or the back end. And it's not on a web application. It's on the actual server. You need to do certain type of processes. I would think uh, Java, uh, Node.js, or you can leverage, um, which I wouldn't recommend this. I'm just giving you options. You got PHP and you also got um, Ruby on Rails. But I would, me personally, I would do PHP, but we're talking about Node.js here, so you got some options here, so keep that in mind. So, number eight, <clears throat> passing data to a WordPress database. Everybody know WordPress is notorious, or PHP and WordPress are married up. Man, this guy is mowing the grass. <laughs> Hope you guys can hear me effectively, but the show must go on. I'm gonna continue this. So. WordPress, passing data to that MySQL database. Um, the luxury of having Node.js is you can leverage more options when it comes to um, just not a MySQL database. I'm pretty sure PHP, well, I, think I know PHP have a lot of options to pull some from my MySQL, uh, maybe even no SQL database, so that's no difference there. But the good thing about um, Node.js, you have those options, so kind of keep that in mind, guys, as we kind of see what those are. Last, well, number nine, marketing and tracking 
um, the uh, CRM or marketing and tracking tracking on your website. JavaScript is already one of the primary ways people use their snippets and pass data through the application and store it in cookies. You can take that process to the next level when you can take that information, store it on a server and process it all within one programming language, guys. So you can do that and uh, make sure you can uh, effectively, effectively have that process, um, process that data throughout your application on a server side, on a database using JavaScript script so it's very important that you guys do that and number 10 standardizing your web code this is another thing that shines when you're using JavaScript versus Node.js that's going to help you guys leverage a lot of information when it comes to uh, standardizing your code. This is a huge problem for most developers because most developers just come in and just plug in a solution they already know to an environment that may not necessarily be the best option. They just want to make that initial money and you wonder why when somebody come in as a, another developer they're looking at this like why would they do that and this is the that particular situation guys so if you have additional questions comment below do you agree with me do you disagree with me let's start a conversation below if you haven't already go check out my seven step guide or check out my premium courses below guys and support the channel so that we can help you get to that six figure salary like subscribe to the content and i'll see you guys in the next video check out my seven step guide here and uh sorry about that lawnmower hope that uh sound didn't come across too bad but i'll see you guys in the next video